Some gold-plated chains would make a nice retirement gift for a very, very good slave. <laughs> well, this Are was, you serious? Well, this was written. Are you serious? This was written years Did ago. Did you just write that? I didn't write Did it. Did you just say that? No, I read it, yes. You read that? <laughs> I know. I walked through blood and bones in the streets of Manhattan trying to find my brother. Jesus. Yeah, he was in northern Canada. <laughs> This is cool. So the news, we're going to talk about That's the news. Right. So we have a yeah. business news. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg is facing a one billion dollar uh, a one billion dollar tax bill this year. Now that's uh, he pays a billion dollars in taxes. In tax, that's uh, that's a lot of money. Good problem to have, right, yeah. Tom? That's not bad. God damn! Absolutely, a billion that's dollars. A billion dollars. That's more than my dad made in his lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, this guy's carping about that. In, in, in the airport, I met uh, Matlock. Uh, Matlock is uh, Andy Griffin. Yeah, Andy used to call himself Andy Griffin. Now he goes by Ben Matlock. <laughs> really calls himself Ben Matlock. But uh, so, uh, yeah, I went into the airport and he was in there and you know the bookstores they have in the, in the, in the oh, airports? Yeah, yeah, sure. So he's in there, he's reading a big, one of the big thick mm. books, you know, mm -hmm. smart guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm standing over there, I'm, I look, I'm leafing through a Jughead comic, I see him over there. <laughs> so I think to myself, I say, hey, I'm going to sidle up beside uh, old Ben Matlock, yeah. and uh, I'm going to grab one of them big books myself, he doesn't have to know nothing. Sure. Pretty soon we get in a conversation, mm -hmm. we start talking, and, uh, and I, I find out uh, how he ever solved that case where Claude, uh, Claude Aikens killed, you remember, anyways, whatever. <laughs> I wanted to talk to him. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, take 10 minutes, I'm talking to him, I'm talking to him, he's very friendly, very mm -hmm. outgoing and everything like that. And uh, it was really nice. And all of a sudden I realized it wasn't Ben Matlock at all. Really? <laughs> it's not Andy Griffith? No, just some old man. And uh, <laughs> now, don't you think that this guy has a, a moral, you know, a responsibility to tell people instantly that he's not Matlock. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's actually... a good question. I you know why people are gay? You don't know. Do you know why you're heterosexual? You don't know why. Uh, no, I don't know. Well, maybe the abnormal gene would be hetero. That's true. Uh -huh. Hey, maybe the normal right. gene would be uh, those maybe ladies it would be that normal to be gay that cut their cocks into vaginas. <laughs> no, if you're looking to make it in standard television, you're not going the right route. Oh, no, route. no, no. You're not going the right route. Here. Once we, no, once I get on There's, Hulu. You're not sending this tape to CBS, are you? No, once okay. I get on Hulu, the whole act right. changes. No, do you know that, that you are a cis male? Have you ever heard of that term? A what? cis male? Cis male. C-Y-S-M-A-L-A. So what it means is that you are a man. You're born a man. Well, as far as you know. As far as I know. And you identify yourself as a man. Yes. That's a cis male. Now, I don't understand. Where does that... Is this a new phrase? Yes. It's a way of marginalizing a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> We're running out of time, but I would be remiss here if I didn't bring up something. People have been uh, bothering me about this for months and months. People come on the Bob show Uecker. and they say, when, the next time you see Norm MacDonald, he's got some tremendous stories about the great Bob Euchre. Now, do you have a story <laughs> you can tell us about Bob Euchre? Voice well, Bob, of the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, Bob Euchre is, uh, is one of my best friends. He's a great man. I know Artie told a story <laughs> when he was here, and Bob was not too thrilled with that. But, uh, it's Artie Lang you're talking Artie about. Artie Lang, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bob is a very, very funny man, and, uh, and uh, I, I go, often go in the booth with him, you know. Oh, sure. So uh, one time we were there, <laughs> and uh, John Fogarty was in the mm -hmm. audience. Mm -hmm. You know, a fortunate son, you know. So uh, John Fogarty was there, so... Bob Euchre is a very uh, interesting guy. He thinks of everybody as the same. He doesn't think of people as stars or anything like that. He's a very down-to-earth yeah. guy. So uh, he was talking to me. He says, hey, man, you know that guy? I go, yeah. He goes, that's uh, John Fogarty, rock and roll singer. So I go, yeah. I go, yeah, yeah. I know who it is. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, uh, but I played in a golf tournament with him. He goes, you probably think of him as some that likes to bite the heads off of chickens, but uh, <laughs> this guy can... Uh, That's exactly how I think of him.
this guy can get it out of the sand trap like nobody's business. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so he goes, he's got a hell of a set of pipes on him. Uh -oh. He goes, uh, uh, come the seventh inning stretch, I'll have him up here. He'll sing for you. <laughs> so I said, no, no, Bob, don't do that. Like, don't have him come up and sing yeah. for me, please, you know. He goes, what's matter, man? Don't you even know who he is? He got all mad. <laughs> so I go, yes, Bob, I know who he is. He did Creedence Clearwater sure. Revival. Yeah. He goes, yeah, he did all that. <laughs> Why is there an app for everything except how to rape a baby? <laughs> Jesus. All joking aside, I know you love to joke, Bob Dole, you know, but that guy, he's a war hero, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's, he gave his, his uh, arm for his country. You know, he went through all these debilitating injuries during the war for his country. It was great. And in all fairness, though, Bill Clinton also, he had a a kind of some war injuries. Really? You know? Yeah. When he was in England there during the Vietnam War, I heard he, uh, <laughs> I heard he, uh, he had a bad injury. He burned his mouth on a bong. Really? <laughs> of course, it was very inspiring to see President Clinton up here on crutches making a speech. I mean, I thought that was just uh, amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, it's been difficult for the president. You know, he can't jog now, and uh, he needs help getting around, and he's still... You know, he still uh, occasionally suffers great pain, you know. Uh, on the upside, you got your medical marijuana, so that's, uh, you know. <laughs> you must inhale, sir. It's the only way you're going to get better. It's... Last week on Larry King Live, Marlon Brando made the shocking statement that Hollywood is, quote, run by Jews. In response, outraged Jewish organizations made it snow in New York in April. And here I am, you know, I look out, I see President Bill Clinton, you know, I see Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. You know, media mogul Rupert Murdoch, you know, uh, broadcast legend Larry King, you know, uh, pornographer Larry Flint, you know, Dick Morris. The list is starting to drop off a little, folks, but still, you get the idea. It's daunting. I'll show you how they go. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan, so you can do it to the camera or you can do it to me. It doesn't matter. Either. Michigan man Curtis Peterson received a 15-year prison sentence for having sex with his pet pit bull. <laughs> What's that, Lassie? Woof, woof. Grandpa got stuck in a well. <laughs> woof, woof. Oh, you got raped. <laughs> <laughs> they say the world's a smaller place than it used to be, but I think that's an optical illusion based on me becoming a big fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's only now, if people were to Google a picture of Savile, uh -huh. knowing that he was a horrible um, pedophile and general all-round rotten person, that you'd look at it and you'd go, of course. I mean, now you look at it, yeah. but yes, that makes perfect sense. I mean, with these like, weird... He would I wear, knew like, about weird, the he pedophile. Would think he'd wear things a bit like this. I knew, the, <laughs> I knew the bit about the pedophile, but I didn't know about the all-around bad person part. Yes, well, I, was, I, I suddenly realized that I couldn't remember all of his crimes. There's Charles Woodson. How about that? I want a season he had. Great, Manny. He became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> all bets are off, counsel. Just a word of advice. Have you ever done anything in your long and storied career that you consider specifically to be in bad taste, as you look back on it? Maybe at the time you thought it was a good play, but you look uh, back on it and you think that was in bad taste. Well, sometimes, like in stand-up, I'll do jokes that are, uh, that I, th like one time I was doing this thing in San Francisco and they were all gay uh, people in the audience, they told me, so I figured I'd do In San Francisco? Yeah. No. <laughs> so I figured I'd do stuff about gay people so that they could relate to yeah, it. Yeah, it's warm up. Right. <laughs> they love that. And so I was talking about, because I went to this gay pride parade and I saw in it there were these uh, old men and old ladies like with these uh, signs that said, we are proud of our gay son, you know? And so I was saying, that's an odd thing to be proud of, you know, because it's not an achievement, you know? It's not like something you work all your life to be gay or anything like that. And 
I, I just wondered, I just, I, I had a hard time believing that these 50, 60 year old men are actually bragging, you know, at work like they're, hey, uh, Bill, you know, uh, my kid, oh my God, we're proud of him, Johnny. He uh, uh, graduated from Harvard, you know, uh, first in his class, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, now he's articling over at a law firm and, uh, oh yeah, he loves cock. <laughs> you know? This kid. He can't get enough cock in his mouth, his ass, his kid's always cock. I got a, I got a picture of the boy here sucking another man's cock. I want to show it to you.